In this video, the Protection Audit tool is used to review the protection settings of the relays in the transmission system grid. The various features of the tool are explained and the tripping times will be analysed. Study case 07 protection should be activated. Let's first have a look at the protection devices modelled in this network. We can colour the network model according to secondary equipment. If this option is selected, the positions of relays are indicated by red colouring. Each line is protected by two distance protection devices. The network is divided into four grids with different relay types in each grid. Let's have a look at a detailed substation graphic. We can see the graphical representations of the relays and measurement devices. The relays have already been configured. The zone reaches are calculated according to the cumulative method and the starting units are set to overcurrent apart from those in the northwest grid which only have impedance starting. We would now like to evaluate the protection scheme for different fault types. This is done using the protection audit tool which is found in the protection and arc flash analysis toolbox. Here we can select the area where the short circuits are going to be calculated. This link gives access to the short circuit command to be used and the various fault types to be examined can be defined here. Four different fault types have been set up. Note that the single phase fault is calculated with and without a fault resistance of 10 ohms. The short circuits will be analysed for all branches with a step size of 10%. The command is executed and the calculated relay tripping times and fault clearing times will be stored in the result file. This icon is used to run the protection audit report. Three options are available. We'll look at the tripping times oriented towards the network elements. Let's go to the tripping times page. Here the time limits for primary, secondary and tertiary protection may be set as well as the severity category to apply in the case of corresponding failures. In this simple case, we only want to establish whether the primary protection tripping time is below or above 0.5 seconds. For this reason, the severity for backup protection is set to no issue. The report shows a coloured bar for every fault type and protected element. If the tripping time for the detected primary protection device is above 0.5 seconds, a portion of the bar corresponding with the location on the line at which the fault was applied is coloured red. As an example, let's take a look at the single phase fault for the line NWL2. After expanding the single phase fault, the single phase faults with and without fault impedance are shown. When considering faults with 10 ohm fault impedance on line NWL2, there are tripping times above 0.5 seconds. We can open the detailed view of this bar and filter the roll column to show only primary devices. For this line, the protection devices trip after 5 seconds or not at all when the fault is applied at the remote end. We've identified a critical case and have to take a closer look at the network. Let's mark one device in the graphic. And we can look at the relay's RX plot. Let's calculate the same fault on the remote end of the relay. We can see in the RX plot 
that the resistive zone reach is too short and the zone settings should be adapted. In the same manner, the device coordination and fault clearing times can be evaluated. The protection audit tool is suitable for a comprehensive network-wide evaluation, not just of distance protection as shown here, but all protection methods.